Welcome to everyone. Um, I thought that uh, uh, since uh, um, many of my colleagues mentioned uh, uh, microeconometrics uh, and individual data, I could uh, start by sort of clarifying uh, what microeconometrics is and why it, uh, uh, it's got a different name uh, from uh, uh, standard econometrics or macroeconometrics. So microeconometrics, uh, uh, the, the, there's, there's several definitions out there, but the one that I, that I like the best um, sort of um, uh, relates microeconometrics to uh, the study of uh, 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 data that uh, refer to the individual decision makers as they are described by economic models. So if you think about uh, a model where firms make uh, optimal investment decisions to maximize profits, then micro data for this particular problem would be data where each record is a single firm and you observe several things about this firm, including uh, the level of investment that they make. Or think about a model of human capital accumulation where individual agents make uh, optimal decisions about how much schooling to acquire, then individual level micro data on this uh, uh, problem would be data where each individual record is a single person and you observe typically various uh, socio-demographic characteristics for these persons and their schooling levels. Okay? So that's the type of data that microeconometrics uh, specifically uh, analyzes. And this differs from macroeconometrics that typically analyzes aggregates. So the average level of education in the country, the average level of investment, and so on. Uh, so, um, to make the connection with your uh, basic econometrics course that you're going to take uh, in, uh, in the second semester, uh, uh, in basic econometrics you're going to sort of review econometric methods that are uh, common to, say, all branches of econometrics, mainly, namely both macro and micro, and whereas in microeconometrics we're going to focus specifically on those techniques that were developed specifically for the analysis of microdata. Uh, in terms of uh, the sequence of, of topics that I uh, plan to cover in the course, uh, I'd like to start from a general discussion of identification in econometrics. Uh, if you like, econometrics is different from statistics in the sense that econometrics is about using data to estimate the parameters of economic models. And uh, uh, ident the identification problem in econometrics is precisely about understanding whether uh, the data that we get access to are good enough to provide estimates of uh, the parameters of economic models. And we're going to study what are the assumptions that we need to impose on the data to be able to sort of uh, make inference about the parameters of these models from the data that, uh, that we use. So we're going to discuss the foundations of identification in econometrics and then uh, uh, connect this to the more recent idea of um, uh, the estimation of causal effects. There's a big discussion in econometrics that is sort of reviving now on whether uh, the estimates that we produce can be really interpreted as causal effects. So uh, the government increases taxes and typically, or decreases taxes, and you hear stories by politicians on, uh, on the media arguing that that has, for example, had an effect on employment or unemployment and so on. We're going to discuss what are the uh, assumptions, the econometric uh, difficulties in being able to precisely estimate what is the effect of whatever intervention on whatever outcome. Uh, so I'm going to organize around these two main uh, broad topics, identification and causality, the presentation of uh, specific econometric techniques uh, like uh, OLS, uh, instrumental variables, uh, things that you, have, you might have uh, seen or reviewed in your uh, basic econometrics courses in the light of econometric identification and causality. Um, uh, so, so that sort of describes the, the content of the course. In terms of uh, um, uh, exam and, uh, and uh, evaluation, uh, we usually have uh, three to four problem sets during the course that are um, uh, prepared by small groups. Uh, they usually um, account for about 30 to 40% of your final grade, so a, a substantial part. 
we're going to complement uh, actual lectures, standard lectures, where I sit in front of you, I stand in front of you and pontificate about things, with more uh, applied sessions, uh, typically also more interactive sessions in the computer lab, where we sit in front of a computer and we uh, apply the techniques that we discuss in, in, in the lectures on real world data. Um, and then there's going to be a final exam. Um, I think this is, uh, uh, this is all. And if you do not have additional questions, I uh, stop here. <laughs>